Good morning, everyone. Let's get started here in a couple of minutes. Settle in. Is somebody in trouble? It's you. Am I in trouble? I'm waiting it's, for it to it's, you, it's usually you. I know. If anybody uses my middle name, oh, yeah, I go by my middle name. You, huh? I go by you, middle Yes, you do. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. How is everyone this morning? Good, good. Glad to hear it. Uh, we have some announcements I need to give to you. Um, there's going to be a baby shower for Zach and Mindy Johnson on June 26th, 2 o'clock, in the Fellowship Hall. It's a boy. Emmett, I love the name. Emmett James, and they're registered at Amazon and Walmart. Um, drama team, you're going to have a practice all day? That's pretty dramatic. Uh, yeah. Yeah, stay hydrated. <laughs> They're going to have a practice uh, with a live audience. Where did you import the live audience? Oh, so you need a live audience. All day? Not today. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Okay. Okay. Uh, I was going to say a live audience for all day. That's a big ask. <laughs> Okay, so we're inviting friends and family to join us for practice tomorrow at 6.30. Uh, youth camp fundraiser lunch next Sunday, June 12th, right after worship, $7.50 per person or $25 per household. What are we having? Uh, spaghetti. Spaghetti. And, and Alfredo. And Alfredo. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, also, uh, if, if they need donation auction items. Donations of auction items needed. So if you have anything, uh, you know, you do a crafty kind of thing, that would be great to, to see them. Yes. Yes. Speaking of next week, I have a group coming in from Sock City, Wisconsin to, to run a mission trip. So they are going to come from the polar north and come to the sweltering, you know, humidity. Uh, so... Here's what I would like to do. We're going to be worshiping uh, from Sunday evening till Friday evening. Come join us. Come join us. We'd like to use this kind of as a revival type thing, maybe. Um, we've got uh, uh, Drew is going to bring, uh, bring the messages during the week. Uh, we're going to be working. Um, we had a little snafu with a shower trailer this week, and it, and it got pulled. So, uh, luckily, our local YMCA is letting us uh, shower there. So, um, we have a, a guy coming to lead worship, uh, Ty Warden. Um, he is a fantastic musician. So, he's going to be a solo guy, uh, but it's, that's okay. A uh, group of 15. We'd love to have you every night. Come listen to Drew um, and, and uh, just come worship with us. Let's see here, Falls Creek Parent Camper Meeting, June 26th. Immediately following worship, all students will, uh, will need parent representation to complete forms. So when is, when is camp actually happening? July 11th through 16th. 
And how much is it? $150. They can make payments? Yes. Okay. Well, When is, when, is the, when is the hard cutoff? June 15th. June 15th. So if you have not paid or if you have not paid anything, uh, June 15 is the cutoff. Yeah. Okay. So you can still pay it uh, by June 15 if you want to go to camp. Um, Matt McCauley, where are you? Oh, <laughs> sorry. I didn't look low enough. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Don't be shy. If you helped with Undefiled last week, would you please stand up? Please, please, please don't, don't like be shy. Please stand up, please. Yeah. Give yourself a hand. If you look around, that's like most of the church, right? And so I just wanted to come up here and say a humongous <laughs> thank you. You guys gave sacrificially like way, way beyond <laughs> what you probably even thought you signed up for. But um, I, just wanted, I just wanted to say thank you. Yeah, it's done. Woo! It looks amazing. Uh, we started post-production and um, keep you updated on that. We still have some shirts. Uh, I was told that if you still wanted a shirt, they're like $12, I think. Um, seat chip or patty and yep. uh, we'll get you a shirt. Uh, so I heard a, an expression used this week, and you can tell me if <laughs> it's, real, it's kind of a funny one. So can you, say, <laughs> can you honestly say that this movie is in the can? <laughs> so uh, what day was that? Um, Answer. Day two or three, we Answer actually nice. broke a toilet. Uh, at Kelly's house, we had a toilet break. Uh, and so you can definitely say it's in the can, yes. Got it. Okay. That's all. That's all I want to say about that. That's the first time he's ever hit his head on anything. On anything. <laughs> the one time they put the microphone low enough for me. <laughs> uh, so uh, probably this winter-ish. Uh, no, no. Maybe. Uh, probably like. Um, you know, late fall or winter, early winter. Do you have to tell day. somebody a, an exact date for like IMDB or whatever, all that other? Um, working with some people for post production out in California right now, so um, yeah, that'll that'll all get firmed up like here in the next couple months. So, yeah. Yeah. It's not like my home videos where I'm done. And I'm Just upload it to YouTube. Yeah. 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 I wish it were that easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting, man. Good job. Way to go. Give Matt a hand. One, one last thing I have for you. Oasis uh, will serve breakfast at Water Gardens on uh, Tuesday, June 21st. Where is Dan? There he is. Why do you keep... Would you find a seat and just stay there? <laughs> for goodness sakes, you're over here, over... Whew. Okay. So I have something for you. Me? Yes. What do I do? How do you find Will Smith when he's lost in the snow? How do you find Will Smith when he's lost in the snow? Look for the Fresh Prince. <laughs> How'd that one slap you? Huh? Yeah. Slapped you pretty good, didn't it? <laughs> See ya. Good. Might be too soon, but pretty good. Let's stand together and worship. Without your goodness, I would be desperate without your love. Slain to the darkness if it wasn't for the cross. You have won me with your kindness, chased me down when I was lost. Where would I be? If it wasn't for the cross, oh hallelujah, thank you Jesus, I was a prisoner, but now I'm not, with your blood you 
but my freedom, oh hallelujah, for the cross. And all my shame was met with mercy, now your mercy will be my song, and all oh, the glory, all oh, the power of the cross. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner, and now I'm not. With your blood, you bought my freedom. Oh, hallelujah. your stripes I'm healed by your death I live the power of sin is overcome it is finished it is done by your stripes I'm healed by your death I live the power of sin is overcome it is finished it is done by your stripes I'm healed by your death I live the power of sin is overcome it is finished it is done by your stripes I'm healed by your death I live, the power of sin is overcome, it is finished, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, I was a prisoner, but now I'm not. With your blood you bought my freedom, oh, hallelujah, for the cross, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, I was a but now I'm not with your blood you but my freedom oh hallelujah for the cross oh hallelujah for the cross oh hallelujah for the cross hey, amen it's good to be in church this morning isn't it are you awake If faith can move the mountains, let the mountains move. We come with expectation, waiting here for you. Waiting here for you. You're the Lord of all creation, still you know my heart, the author of salvation, you loved us from the start, waiting here for you, with our hands lifted high.
get the little guys up here, and while they're coming up here, bring your attention to the baptistry. We're going to start with the baptism this morning. That was awesome. That's a good way to start church, isn't it? Especially, I mean, if it's warm, we could all go up there and just kind of take a little swim, too. That's right. Some of, if you've been baptized at Journey Church, uh, you know that it's hit and miss, whether it's cold or hot. There's no in-between, so uh, it's a hot tub today. Steam back there, it's curling Siler's hair, isn't it? Yeah, just look at it, it's all curly. Ha <laughs> ha! All right, I've been told I can't have a 15-minute children's sermon today, huh? <laughs> Scott says, you're on a time limit, so let's, let's do this. You ready? Today, I don't know where the children's sermon sack is because Drew did a children's sermon last week. Where'd you come from? Oh, well, how do you like that? It's good to see you, Micah. Well done. Good job. So, I don't know who has a sermon sack, but Miss Angie was ready. She was, she was Angie on the spot, and she had something for us today. What are those? Goldfish. The goldfish, do you think they're swimming around in there? That'd be weird, wouldn't it? That'd be so weird, have them swimming around in a sack. You open it up and you eat raw goldfish, yucky. So, here's the thing. What can we do about this children's sermon today where we're going to talk about goldfish? And here's what I'm thinking, okay? So if you're visiting today and wondering what's going on during children's sermon, we talk about something, whatever it is. It might be, you know, I, I don't ever know what it is until right up time to do it. And usually we have a sermon sack, we get that out of there and we talk about it then. But today, Miss Angie gave me something, she gave me this goldfish bag. And so we talk about what it is, and then we talk about how it might relate to our relationship with Jesus, because we truly believe that anything that you encounter in life, no matter what it is, it can relate to our relationship with Jesus. And I thought it was interesting that Miss Angie gave me this goldfish bag this morning, and then Drew was just up there talking about Trinity and how she accepted Jesus into her life and into her heart and as her Lord and Savior, and today she was baptized, and when she was baptized and she went underwater, he said something. She said, he, he said, buried with Christ, and then raised to walk. I think he said raised to walk in newness of life, raised to walk new. She's a new person when she comes out of the water. We believe that that's a symbol of what Christ does for us whenever we become followers of Jesus Christ, when we're buried with him in death. And I thought about this with this goldfish bag. And how it's just crackers, shaped like fish. Interesting, huh? Crackers. You know, when we do uh, Lord's Supper, you've seen us do the Lord's Supper maybe, where we pass that plate around and it has the, the stale bread in it, it seems like, right? The, yeah, yeah. 
You mess up one time, and then, yeah. And so we do that. You remember when we do that? Have you guys seen us do that? Yeah. And so we pass those. Those are just crackers. They're bread. Just like this is bread, really. Flat bread, but bread. And it's a special kind of bread. It doesn't have something in it. It's a bread, but it symbolizes Jesus' body. That when he died on the cross, he paid the penalty for our sins. And this is, when I think about this cracker in here, I think about how Jesus died on the cross and he, he paid the penalty for our sins. He died for us. But the great thing is, is just like when Trinity was baptized and she came out of that water to symbolize Jesus Christ coming out of the grave, the great thing is, is he didn't die and just stay dead. Jesus rose again from the dead. And that's amazing. And do you know why he rose from the dead? The same reason that he died for us. To show us how much he loves us. And the Bible tells us that he has gone to prepare a place for us. Big house. A big house. We used to sing a song. It's a big house with lots and lots of room. A big, big table and lots and lots of food. That was a great song. We should sing that sometime. Scott, if I would have been ready. If I would have been ready, we could have we could have jammed to that song. And so, anyway, I think about how Jesus being our bread, he's the bread of life for us. And so that's what I think about when I think about these goldfish right now. So kind of cool, huh? That Jesus loves you so much that he died for you. And he rose again for you too. All right, guys, listen. If you are three, four, or five years old and you want to go back to a cool class, you get to go with Miss Angie if you'd like to go with Miss Angie. The rest of you guys grab an activity pack and go sit by an adult or by your parents. It's like a clown car back there. People keep coming out. What is happening? All right, you guys rock. That's awesome. Hey. Drew, he just called you a clown. I don't know if you noticed that. Um, that was specific to you. So, <laughs> the clown shoe fits, absolutely. Um, I, I did want to make one clarification um, for Chip just mispronounce something. I just wanted to make it clear for everybody. Uh, for Zach and Mindy, uh, it, the baby's name is spelled E double M E double T. Um, you would think that's pronounced Emmett. It's actually not. The E, the double M, the E are all silent. The double T is pronounced Nate. So I just want to make that clear for everybody. Uh, I know there's confusion over that. So just it's funny because I was thinking James sounds a lot like John. It's Yep, that, that kid's going places. Um, so, good, good names, good names. All right. Uh, well, there's some things we want to pray for this week. Um, certainly, we'll continue to pray for the movie. The filming is done. That's great. Um, but there's a lot of work to be done with the post production. Um, and uh, I think it'd be great if Matt didn't have a stroke. So uh, we can maybe pray for some um, rest and relaxation for him. Uh, and, and then also. Um, I've been coming to you for several weeks and talking to you about the need uh, in the state of Missouri for foster homes. It's really not just Missouri, it's the entire United States. But uh, uh, we have a, a class starting this week at our office, and so I would just ask you to join in praying for the five families that are coming uh, to that class um, who are going to become trained to be foster parents. I would just ask you to continue to pray for them, uh, that the Lord would give them strength uh, to, to take on this task. So let's go to the Lord this morning. Father, I just thank you so much for the opportunity to be here this morning got to get to witness um, a, a baptism, um, an outward expression of what has already taken place inside. Father, that uh, uh, this is the essence of the gospel, that we are changed. We become new uh, creatures in you uh, when you take up residence inside of us. The old is done away with, and, and behold, new things have come. Um, I just thank you so much for uh, that, that transaction that takes place in the heart uh, and life of the believer. And Father, um, Lord, I'm just so grateful to be here this morning uh, in a room filled with like-minded believers, um, with lovers and followers of you. Um, we have this opportunity to just give you glory and honor through song, to just sing to you um, about your goodness and your greatness and your mercy and your love. Um, and so, Father, we just, we just thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, Lord, we want to continue to pray for the film, um, and God just ask that you would give uh, everybody... Um, but, but Matt and um, Patty and, and uh, uh, <coughs> Shannon and, and uh, some of those.
those I know who have done just a tremendous amount of work behind the scenes, that you would just give them some rest, just an opportunity to, to breathe and relax um, and to be filled um, with your presence and with your spirit this morning. Um, and Father, I also just want to continue to pray for uh, yeah, this need for foster homes. And God, just ask that you would continue to stir in the hearts of your people, um, to, to bring forth, to call out, to raise up, um, people who are, are, are willing to um, take on this responsibility and those who are willing to support them, uh, those who will commit to pray faithfully um, for our foster parents um, and for the kids that are going to be living in their homes. And so, Father, we just, uh, it, it's such a monumental task. We can't do it on our own. It absolutely requires your intervention. And so, Father, we just come to you this morning and ask that you would do that, that you would just intervene that you would just show up in a big way, um, the, the way that only you can. And Father, we just want to give you glory and honor in this place this morning. So Father, just ask that you would inhabit the praises of your people, that you would be magnified and glorified as we lift high and exalt the name of Jesus in this place. We ask these things in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. We're going to continue in a uh, attitude of prayer. It's a time of meditation, a time of thoughtful discussion with your Lord. We're going to sing a song here and, and you can just listen. You can sing along if you'd like. Uh, but during this time, I really want you just to focus on your relationship with God. Maybe all week you haven't had a chance to just stop and, and talk to God. I know I get that way sometimes. I figure if I do, then someone else probably shares that same type of schedule. And I don't like it, you know. But we don't have an excuse right now. In this moment, right now, our excuse is gone. Because we want you to take the time right now to converse with God. And imagine if you put your heart in the right place in this moment, it would be more than just a monologue. It would be a full-on dialogue. See what the Lord has for you this morning as Maggie sings. A weary traveler Beat down from the storms that you have weathered Feels like this road just might go on forever Carry on You keep on giving but every day this world just keeps on taking Your tired heart is on the edge of breaking Carry on Weary traveler, restless soul You were never meant to walk this road alone So just hold on, weary traveler, you won't be weary long. No more searching, heaven's healing's gonna find where all the hurt is. When Jesus calls, we'll lay down all our heavy burdens. Walk this road alone. I don't need a love be worth it. So just hold on, weary traveler. You won't be weary long. No, you won't be weary long. You won't be weary long. Someday soon. We're gonna make it home. Someday soon 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 we're gonna make it home. Gonna make it 
home, weary traveler, restless soul. You were never meant to walk this road alone. Only to love be worth it. So just hold on, weary traveler. You won't be weary, love. Weary traveler, you won't be weary, long. Weary traveler, you won't be weary, long. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Psalms. Actually, Psalm 139, please. Our topic for this sermon series is trigger words. I'm not exactly sure how the following weeks are going to go, but I suspect that at times the message will be controversial, like today. And I'm terrified. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. I appreciate your prayers, and I pray that this message, though will be controversial, will be resulting in encouragement for you. At times, we'll approach a subject with a light heart, and it will leave you with joy, and I rely on the Holy Spirit to convict and direct us through this series. Because when I started out talking about trigger words, I thought this is going to be kind of fun. And then I started receiving your trigger words. And I thought, I have now stepped in it. This is going to be something. And, and I think it was an eye-opener for me. Uh, because, I mean, last week I left you, or last time I spoke to you, Drew, by the way, thank you uh, for leading us and teaching us about worship last week. And, and uh, that, that was in between patients, I, was, I had a chance to watch, and so I had the worship going on in the ER last week, and, and I got to, uh, the word that God used through you was uh, projected through the ER in my little circle anyway, so you preached to more people than you knew last week, and so well done, sir, good job. Um, but last time I was with you, I, I left you with this statement, I'm just going to read to you this statement that I left you with. You need to be affirmed today. You need to be lifted up. But there is a struggle going on within you. See, your description of who you are doesn't have to be who the world says that you must be, but you have to search your heart, not just your mind. You have to search your heart. And deep within you, there's a still small voice growing louder and louder and louder within you, and it's saying, repent, turn away from the things of old, and listen not to the world around you, but repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Because of that very statement from Jesus Christ himself. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I must talk about the trigger words. Because these trigger words that we're going to talk about have to do with our own personal world anyway. 
Turn away from the things that tear you down. Look to the things that build you up. Because he, Jesus Christ, is the only word in your life that matters. See, things are, are going to bother us. Things that we have no control over at all. And things are going to tear us down. But Jesus is the only word that matters. And today, the trigger word that I'm going to talk to you about is abortion. There's no question in my mind of how difficult this subject is. And at the same time, I'm probably not going to cover this topic in a manner in which you hope that I will. And if you think that I'm going to stand before you and politicize and unabashedly rain fire and brimstone on you, you'll be mistaken. Because that is not my style, first of all. That's not the way the Lord uses me. That is not my desire at all. I will make you uncomfortable because I am uncomfortable and therefore it's a given. But I hope and I pray that I bring honor to God's word this morning. And I know that you join me in that, that we bring honor to God's word as we address this very difficult subject. I will bring and I will begin with my point of view because I do not want anyone to be confused about my personal thoughts about things, you know, but ultimately what I'm about to tell you doesn't matter, see, because it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think. It matters what God's word says, right? That's the trigger word, God's word. And so my thoughts on this are, I believe in the sanctity of life. I am morally convicted that all human beings at any and every stage of life are worthy of dignity and respect. And they should be treated in that manner. That's my point of view. That's what I stand upon. Life is precious. And as of late, the subject of abortion has become a hot, top, hot button topic. Would you agree? Well, I'm not sure it has never been anything but such a thing. I mean, but lately it has become a hot button topic. And so since 1973 or even earlier, which I'm going to show you in just a moment, when Roe versus Wade was ruled upon, that's when it, you know, that's when it was at its height, so it seems. And, it, I, you know, did you know that that wasn't the only ruling that year uh, with regard to, to abortion? I'll, I'll talk about that. Many of us consider that court case to be a landmark regarding the subject, but that's not the case. In the U.S., during colonial times, abortion, primarily by chemical means such as herbs, uh, it was very commonplace. There were no abortion laws at that, during that time. They didn't have abortion laws during that time. 